Hello everyone, Vicente from HDTV Test here. In this video, we are going to analyze the HDR picture quality of Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Xbox Series X. And also, I'm going to try and explain how to use the HDR calibration screen in the game itself to obtain the best picture quality for your own television. So my tool of choice for this HDR analysis is the Canon DPV2411 reference broadcast monitor. This is a 24-inch screen with a 4K resolution. And the most interesting thing about this monitor is its HDR analysis toolkit, which some of you may have seen before in my HDR analysis of multiple Ultra HD Blu-rays. So at the top left corner, you can see a frame luminance monitor. This will record the highest peak brightness in the frame itself and also the average frame luminance level. So it will actually jot down the max CLL and max FALL within each frame. And at the bottom left corner, what you can see is basically a waveform monitor. And this will correspond to the peak brightness of various elements on screen. So let's say if I actually move it around here, you can see the waveform moving as well. And you can probably see from here that the sun is running at around 830 nits. If we combine the information we glean from the waveform monitor and also the frame luminance monitor at the top left corner. So armed with these tools, what we can do is to go into the calibration screen and we will figure out how to use the parameters to get the best HDR picture quality from your own television. So this has been adjusted clearly. So what I'm going to do is to reset it to default. And the default maximum luminance is 800 nits and the exposure is zero. So if you increase the maximum luminance, this will increase the peak brightness as you can see from the frame luminance monitor and also from the calibration screen in the game itself. And interestingly, a maximum luminance value of 4000 nits on the slider will give you 2100 nits actually in the game itself. Now, this is slightly misleading because the actual peak brightness is also influenced by this exposure value. So this exposure value actually affects the APL or average picture level of the game picture. So if you increase it, you can see the whole screen getting brighter and the whole waveform being lifted. And if you go to the maximum exposure of two, you can see that the peak brightness has gone up to 3500 nits, which is quite close to the nominal 4000 nit cap, you know, in the game itself. But you can see that everything is blown out and the picture looks a bit washed out. So another thing that I actually want to show you is that the HDIG calibration screen in the console itself does not actually affect this in-game calibration at all. So the HDIG calibration screen in the console won't affect it, has no bearing on this calibration screen. And to demonstrate that, what we're going to do is to go into the HDR game calibration. And then we're just going to, you know, go for some really random values. Uh, and then just go down all the way. And then these are the wrong settings, by the way. I'm just using it to demonstrate my point that you can see that the peak brightness is still running around 3500 nits. And in the bracket, you can see a value of 10,000. That is because the HGIG calibration screen is running all the way up to 10,000 nits. So if I press the reset button on the monitor, this will bring it back down to 3500 nits, which is no change from before we did the HGIG calibration adjustment. So this proves that, you know, all the calibration that you need to do for this game in terms of the HDR output is within the game itself. Now let's try and reset everything. And the most important parameter, in my opinion, would be maximum luminance. So just determine the highest peak brightness in the game itself. If we go all the way down to the minimum of 300 nits, you can see that in the waveform, the sun is running at a maximum value of 290 nits. This, for those of us who dabble in HDR grading, this practice is known colloquially as 
Mandalorianing, Mandoing for short. So if we increase it all the way to the other end and boost the peak brightness unnecessarily, say all the way up to 4000 nits, you can see a peak brightness of 2100 nits in the frame luminous monitor, but this will also blow out a lot of specular highlight detail. And if we go all the way up in terms of exposure as well, this practice is known as Pacific Rimming. And not to be confused with that dodgy DVD you can buy in a night market in Bangkok, you know, together with Shaving Ryan's Private, buy one get one free. So this is clearly the wrong value as well. So let's figure out how we can get the best picture. The way I would go about this would be to increase maximum luminance and then slowly decrease it. And at the point where you see the first drop in brightness where you can see more specular highlight detail within the sun, that should be your clue to stop. And you know, in my case on this 12,000 pound reference broadcast monitor, <laughs> it is about 900 nits, which corresponds to 790 nits in game. And the exposure, I would generally leave well alone, unless you know you are playing in a brighter environment. Because if you are playing in a brighter environment, you may need to lift the mid tones. So I would go up to maybe maximum of say plus five, any higher, and I think that the image will look washed out, and you will lose a lot of HDR pop. I would probably you know, stick to say between 0.3 and 0.5 if you really need that extra boost in terms of the APL or average picture level. Otherwise, I would just leave it at zero in a reference condition. Let's say if you are playing in a pitch black room or if you are playing with only an ambient light condition of five candelas per square meter as per ITU's recommendation, then I would just leave it well alone at zero. So with this in mind, what we are going to do is to go into the game itself and analyze the HDR picture. Now, if I can just find what it is, you can see that the sun is around 830 nits, which is not too far away from what we set in the game itself. We set it at around 900 nits. And the reflections in the water is a really quite nice brightness, giving it a slight increase in specular highlights compared with, say, the SDR range, the nominal SDR range of 200 nits. So if I put on the false color function on this monitor, you can see that anything that is monochrome would be the SDR range of 200 nits or below as per the BT2408 document released by the ITU, which states that within an HDR container, the SDR range is below 200 nits. And you can see here from the scale at the left as well that, you know, various elements on screen, it, there is a very nice use of HDR. It is not the most impactful in terms of HDR terms, but it is a very nice use of HDR. Things that should reflect, you know, they reflect quite nicely, you know, and depending on the time of the day as well, if you can look at, say, the floating snow, you know, it comes down quite nicely with that sort of spark. You know, it's not excessive, it's not really in your face, but it's just really a nice natural with some reflections in the snow as well and some footprints. And I think this is a really tasteful HDR grading, really tasteful HDR grading. And, you know, it reflects, you know, the cinematic qualities of the game. And if we call up the Raven, right, you can see that, you know, this... I don't know what are these, these are the beacons, you know, as we move around, you know, they go up all the way to maybe even like 1600 nits. Let's press the reset button to reset it. And then we can see as you like pan around, for some reason, they glow brighter when you are panning. Probably it's just some in-game effect. And if we disable the false color, you can see how it looks like in real life. Okay, and it gives a really nice sparkle to the entire image. It is not the most impactful, if you get what I mean. It is not, say, Aquaman or, you know, even Pacific Rim, but, you know, it's a really nice HDR grading. And again, I don't have time to 
play much longer in terms of this gameplay. It took me ages to get to this point. <laughs> and the way I try to explain it is because, you know, I'm getting older and at my age, you know, I don't really want to learn new techniques and, you know, play all these games. I just want everything done for me. So if I can actually hire someone to play this game, you know, maybe record some footage and then send it across, you know, that would be the most helpful if you are interested in further HDR game analysis, of course. And talking of the game itself, well, that's the nice sun, you know, 830 nits, so it's a really nice effect. And talking of the lack of time, so the other day I was talking to my kind colleague, Adam Fairclough, who's also known as Evil Boris Online, and he was telling me that even in the intro scene, there was like massive stutter despite engaging VRR. I don't know whether VRR is actually working in this game or not. I'll need to analyze it at some point. But, you know, he was trying to tell me that, you know, the moment where he, the young boy approached the king and I said, you know, really, I haven't even reached that stage. And then Adam said something to the effect that, oh, it's just really two minutes in. And, you know, I said, I can't even last two minutes. So <laughs> that's just the state I'm in these days. So I hope you have found this video useful. If you would like to watch some of our HDR game analysis, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.